What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So we're mostly going to be talking about horror updates in this video here today, but at the end of it, after I'm done with these horror updates regarding Scream 7, Saw X, and Nightmare on Elm Street, I will be including a review for Transformers Rise of the Beast. Rise of the Beast, if you want to stick around for that. So just to kick it off with Scream 7, Melissa Barrera talked about Sam's, fu Sam's future in a recent interview with Digital Spy, but I could have sworn she's actually talked about stuff like this in the past, but maybe it's just a little bit of deja vu. She stated this with Digital Spy in regards to Sam's future. She said there are so many places that Sam could go. That's one of the reasons that when I read the script for Scream 5, I was so interested in the character. There's so much potential here of where she could go with her mental health. She's just unpredictable. I find that darkness in her makes her that much more interesting to play and to watch. She's the hero, but she's also kind of the villain. It's this contradiction in her that I find fascinating. And if we get to do another one, I would love to see. The writers have done a really good job with her up until this point. So I trust them just to know where to take her in a way that will be unexpected and cool for the fans. Now, I've seen a lot of people say where they should take Sam is into the direction of how will the death of Tara impact her. I've seen that tossed around. Uh, Melissa Barrera has actually gone on record to say she would she wouldn't mind. Not that she, I guess, would prefer Sam to be Ghostface, but if they were to make Sam Ghostface, she would love to play Ghostface uh, in that role. Now. In terms of how they could explore Sam in the future, obviously killing Tara and seeing how that would impact her could be quite compelling, but that's only being brought up because of the assumption that there's a chance that Jenna Ortega might not participate. But even still, if Jenna is or not to participate, the death of Tara very much so could lead to Sam having one of the most incredible arcs out of the trilogy. If we're gonna play up this mental health issue and this idea that Tara was what kept her grounded. I've talked about this countless times on this channel. But jumping into the next topic here, Robert England recently let it be known that he's too old and too thick to play Freddy Krueger anymore, but Devin Sawa has recently expressed interest in donning the classic fedora. Sawa recently is known for his three roles in Chucky, which all resulted in his death. And then, of course, we all seem to recognize him. If you are someone who had a great childhood with horror, we recognize him the most from Final Destination and for being the original stand if you're in the know with your rap culture sawa shared this sentiment in a tweet honestly i'm down for anything that can give us a quality performance with a design similar to england's makeup that's just my own opinion there dave mccray i've seen recently did an iteration of freddie for dylan's new nightmare i believe is the title of this fan project and i think it'd be badass if dave was actually offered a role as freddie for an official canon entry into the franchise so i've also seen people talk about jamie campbell bauer who has been the name that i've seen tossed around by fans who loved his work in stranger things as vecna but do you think that Devin Sawa will be a good choice for Freddy? Why or why not? Let me know down in the comment section below. Me personally, I don't see it being a good fit. That's just me. And now that I think about it, I am starting to think that I would love, again, for Dave McRae, if at all possible, for him to be offered the next, the, or for him to be the next iteration of Freddy that we get. And, and again, it really all just comes down to the makeup. Because I think, again, for Jackie, his biggest issue was that makeup. Because Jackie, the more and more I think about it and the more I've revisited that remake over the years, Jackie did a fine job. But again, let me know if you think that Devin Sawa could be a good Freddy. Why or why not? Now, last thing here for horror we're going to talk about is Josh Stolberg, who shared some Q&A style updates about Saw X over on Twitter. Which, by the way, Saw X, Viewer Non says that they've been told this is the best entry in the series. So I'm intrigued, but... This came from a friend at Lion's Gate, apparently, anyway. That doesn't mean that, of course, it doesn't mean it's true, but they work for Lion's Gate. Although, I guess, depending on the department, it won't really matter. Maybe they didn't have too much of a direct tie to Saw X, but since they work for Lion's Gate, they just were able to maybe see a cut, and they're not as biased towards it because they didn't actually work on it. They just work for Lion's Gate. Now, Josh said this about Saw X. He said, was it always called Saw X? No, we first started pursuing the storyline even before Spiral. At the time, this was Saw 9. When we first pitched the story in our pitch document, it was simply called John Kramer. We've never been able to make a Kramer-centric film. I mean, we've all been hearing that Saw X is going to be a mid-cool set in between the events of 1 and 2, I believe. And John is expected to travel and deal with a doctor who is a fraud 
for working what he calls miracle operations or something. That was the alleged plot synopsis. Uh, well, actually, that also came from Viewer 9. Now, it was leaked that the iconic location from the original film will return. Shawnee Smith is back, according to trusted sources that have reported on this. All in all, Saw X to me, it just has no business being worse than Spiral. Josh also seemed to tease the return of Billy the Puppet, which isn't too shocking. Knowing that this originally, this was originally our Saw 9 makes me think that a lot of passion must be going behind this one. I just have a feeling because this was originally going to be the movie we got before Chris Rock's Saw film Spiral. Which again, I, I enjoyed Spiral. I do think it's one of the better entries. I know it has its naysayers, but I, I am on the side of going to be defending Spiral. Although, as I rewatch Spiral, it does have some things that I will admit are highly flawed in terms of filmmaking. Now, last thing here, no more horror, horror updates. This will be a spoiler-free review for Transformers Rise of the Beast. Now, Transformers Rise of the Beast, it's my favorite since that original Bay movie. As I mentioned in my tweet, I'm not saying it's better than the Bumblebee Project, cause it isn't, but in comparison to Bay's sequels, this is the best film since that 2007 uh, classic i would say from my childhood anyway now this film of course is directed by stephen capel jr it stars anthony ramos peter cullen pete davidson uh dominic fishback and some other other known names that i'm not going to really get into because there's too many but the story revolves around optimus prime and the autobots taking on their biggest challenge yet with a new threat capable of destroying the entire planet emerges uh, they must team up with a powerful faction of Transformers known as the Maximals to save Earth. Now, we have great human characters in this one who actually are given a lot to do. They aren't off on side adventures with the government entities. So the story isn't juggling a lot with its human characters and keeps it pretty simple and not overstuffed. Noah, who is our main human character, is played wonderfully by Anthony Ramos. He's given a lot of hurdles to overcome that make him more compelling than someone like a Sam Witwicky, who I still love. But... Noah's hurdles make the inevitable make the inevitable alliance with our Autobots and Maximals that much more rewarding. There's even a little rocky start between him and Optimus that blossoms into a mutual understanding over time since Optimus and Noah are trying to overcome similar hurdles. Noah struggles to find a job, has a shaky history with the army, and is trying to keep his home together, but nothing seems to be working, which Optimus can relate to when it comes to his home planet of Cybertron and some of his own uh, struggles he's dealing with internally about blaming himself for how they got trapped on earth and can't get home. But the script is mostly held back by rough dialogue bits and some exposition dumping that mostly comes from Elena, who Dominique Fishback plays. I believe that's Dominique Fishback's character. Yeah, sure. Let us know what's happening, but show don't tell is always my preference show me don't always tell me like this elena is also pretty one note as a character to me but that could change on a rewatch dominique is great in the role which probably ended up saving it the conflict between our autobots maximals and terracons with unicron leading them is kept simple and not overly complex the voice cast does a wonderful job but pete davidson as mirage is easily the standout like i mentioned some of the dialogue is hit or miss especially with the jokes but mirage's material works every time there's a moment where noah says mirage is just a work friend and he's like work friend but you were inside me i just lost it at that at that point it was just delivered so well. The joke might not hit for everyone, but it's definitely Pete's best role for me. The soundtrack is filled with bops, and the 90s era is captured quite well. Much like my love for the screen movies and a formula that we see over and over again but still praise, Rise of the Beast is not something I haven't seen before in terms of a Transformers movie, but it's still executed well enough compared to past franchise fumbles. Admittedly, some of the story beats weren't able to sell me on the stakes it wanted to because it was like, I've seen this before, so I know how this will eventually go down. And of course, it ended up going down how I thought it would. And yet the outcome was still heartwarming and fun to watch. Uh, due to the execution again being so well done. I wasn't the biggest fan of the editing a lot of times. Cuts every other second is a very big issue for me when it comes to filmmaking. But the action sequences are thrilling to look at and easy to follow for the most part. I wouldn't say I was also too crazy about the CGI either. Although that's not to say that it was terrible. Movie doesn't overstay its welcome, clocking in at about two hours. But the pacing for the third act can feel a bit rushed. 
All in all, I would have to give Rise of the Beast a 7 out of 10. Yeah, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.